story time, story time! Yeah, story time! Uncle Bronca placed his hands on his hips, and he gazed down toward the two young girls literally hopping before him. Zandal was the oldest of the pair, coming in about eight summers, while Zoria had only four summers under her belt. The last of the brood, a 14-month-old baby girl named Zendice, was currently in the arms of the other man in the room, Grodar the Unspeakable. All three of them had their mother's features, blonde hair, blue eyes, and pointed half fey ears. In comparison, Bronca was a human man, an adventurer to be specific. He was of average height by human standards and had a large reddish-brown beard that went to his mid-chest. Bronca's skull had long since started balding, so he kept his head shaved. He still wore his leather-armored vest and adventuring pants, but his boots were by the front door, and his bearskin cloak was laid out before the roaring fireplace. Bronca's battle axe leaned against the far wall. Grodar was a half-ogre adventurer and Bronca's long-time partner in crime, as it were. He was a foot and a half taller than Bronca was, and he had long black hair that was tied into a man bun on the back of his head. His warhammer was right beside Bronca's weapon. Related to attire, Grodar was dressed just like Bronca, with clothes obviously bigger in proportion. The half-ogre had the baby rocking in his arms, back and forth, and Zendice was fast asleep. Bronca and Grodar were visiting Bronca's family, and the little girl's parents were in the kitchen, cleaning up after the delicious feast. So you want a story, do ya? Do you want a new story, or an old one? We want a new one! Alright, then you two settle on my cloak, and be prepared. I think it's time for me to tell you about the Dread Witch. Yay! Dread Witch! Dread Witch! Just as the two little girls settled in front of the fire, their mother, Rosalina, came into the room. A stern look was on her face. Bronca held up his hands. What? They want a new story. And they've never heard about her before. Those stories are too scary. Those stories aren't that scary. Yeah, Mom! They aren't scary! Not scary! And how would you two know? You haven't heard them yet. Oh, please, Mom! They won't be scary, I promise! I promise, okay? Please! Very well. But when you two have nightmares, you can't come into Daddy's and my room. It's okay, Mama. We have Uncle Bronca. That you do, little one. That you do. <laughs> so let me tell you the story about the Dread Witch. Rosalina rolled her eyes and then disappeared back into the kitchen. Light laughter resounded from the kitchen, which made Bronca grin all the more. Both of his nieces had planted themselves in the center of the bear cloak, and they sat cross-legged. Bronca stood above them, their eyes locking with his. Once upon a time, in a land not so far from here, there lived an ominous figure called the Dread Witch. She was feared far and wide by the surrounding communities because this Dread Witch had strange and marvelous powers. What kind of powers? The Dread Witch had unnatural powers over negative feelings and energy. She could enhance a person's fears, make them sick, and make them weak. Some even believed that she could raise the dead and command them. <gasps> there were even some accounts where she blinded or deafened people or took away their ability to walk. There were many people who were scared of her. Uncle Wonka, I have a question. What is it, darling? Was the Dread Witch ugly? Someone in the kitchen, a male voice based on the tone, laughed hard. <laughs> I'm sorry, but what? Daddy says that people who are mean to others are ugly people, so we need to be nice to people in general. Yeah, 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 it's true. Daddy says it all the time. Once more, their daddy laughed out loud, right until their mother punched him in the arm. To answer your question, no, 
the Dread Witch wasn't ugly. The reason being, she wasn't mean at all. It was the people in the communities who were ugly. Huh? They were? Yes, they were. The people from the surrounding communities didn't understand the Dread Witch, you see. And they thought she was evil. Whenever something bad happened to them, they blamed her. That's not very nice. No, little one. That is not very nice. One day, the elders of the communities all banded together, and they decided to hire adventurers to go and kill the Dread Witch. That's how I met her. <gasps> That's right. I went to fight the Dread Witch and lived to tell the tale. How did you survive? I had heard from other adventuring contacts that a couple of villages were seeking assistance in ridding the world of a terrible villainess. The advertised pay was pretty good, so I decided to take the job. I wasn't the only one getting paid either. Including me, the villagers sent ten adventurers to try and kill the Dread Witch. Whoa, ten? They were all going after one person. Well, sure, the Dread Witch was extremely powerful. Well, back then, I was a much more brazen and shrewd person than I am today. I knew that if I were one of the first people to go after the Dread Witch, I was probably going to die. So, what I did instead was I pumped up the other adventurers to go in first. <laughs> Uncle Bronca, that's so mean! <laughs> yes, little one, it was. I waited as each of the adventurers went into our hut, and I watched as the Dread Witch fought them all. It was crazy! The Dread Witch shot out these magical black energy tentacles out of her hands, and it grabbed one of the adventurers. <laughs> Bronca reached forward and grabbed both girls. They screamed and then giggled into their hands. This other adventurer, she made her scream and run away into the night. <laughs> one by one, she defeated and decimated her adversaries with dreadful magic. Is that why they called her the Dwed Witch? Because she uses dreadful magic? That's right, darling. The Dread Witch was draining another guy I knew of his life force, so I tried to sneak up behind her. My axe was poised and I slowly crept up, closer and closer. Bronca balled his fists together as if he held an imaginary axe, and he raised it up past his right ear. The girl's eyes were as wide as they could go. From this distance, I saw the Dread Witch was a half fay. She was so engrossed with feasting on the life force of the other guy that she didn't even notice me as I got ready to strike. Or so I thought. Bronca held his imaginary axe above his head, all while breathing in and out loudly. His nieces had brought up their knees to their chests, and they held their own breaths in grim anticipation. As I swung at her, the Dread Witch ducked, and then uppercutted me right in the chin. Yay, Dread Witch! This time their mother laughed loudly, while Zandal giggled into her hands. Oi! Ha <laughs> ha! I see how it is. Anyway, I landed on my back, and then the Dread Witch straddled me. Her hands glowed ominously, and when I tried to knock her off, she blasted me. <gasps> my body was shaking all over, and I felt my strength leave me. My arms flopped to my side, and I could only watch as the Dread Witch started choking me. I really thought I was going to die. How did you get out of that one, Uncle Bronca? Yes! How? How? I was the last one alive, and the Dread Witch was so angry. She asked me why people couldn't just leave her alone. When I wheezed that she was evil, well, that made the Dread Witch even more angry. What did she do, Uncle Bronca? She did something way worse than kill me. She lectured and scolded me. <gasps> oh yes! She said I should be ashamed of myself for believing the lies of the elders and for not using my eyes or my common sense. She dragged me into her hut and she showed me exactly why the elders wanted her dead. But why would they want that, Uncle Wonka? 
Yeah, yeah, why? Because inside the Dread Witch's hut was a secret staircase that led to an underground spring. The spring restored a person's youth, and the elders of the village were actually part of an ancient and evil cult. They were the ones who brought misfortune and calamity to the surrounding kingdoms in ages past. But it was the Dread Witch's mother who beat them before and built the hut to protect the fountain. Wow, the elders were the evil ones? I did not see that coming. What a twist! Well, once I found out she wasn't evil, I asked if I could help her take out the elders. Wow, you offered to help the Dread Witch? That's right. And so, once she healed my body of the negative effects she inflicted on me, she and I hatched a plan. What I didn't know was that going up against the elders was going to turn into an epic quest. You see, the elders found out we were coming for them, and so they fled the villages. <laughs> you mean, they got away? No, my little ones, they did not. Oh, sure, they fled the villages, but the Dread Witch and I went on an adventure to find and slay the evil elders. Whoa! You went on an adventure with her? How long did it take to find them all? It took eight years. Wow, that's longer than I've been alive! What about the magical fountain? The Dread Witch carefully concealed the entrance with magic and I helped roll large boulders around the hut to keep it hidden. Anyway, I think it was some time after we were tracking the third elder that I met your uncle Grodar. Grodar beamed a small smile before blowing a small kiss at Bronca. After we slew the last elder, the Dread Witch thanked me because the magical fountain was finally safe from evil clutches. Uncle Bronca, what happened to the Dread Witch after that? Well, as the legend goes, the Dread Witch decided to become evil so she could eat the toes off of little girls just like you. She got away from me before I could stop her, and she actually disappeared around here many years ago. Around here? Like in our village? That's scary. Ah, watch out! The Dread Witch is right behind you! Roar! The children screamed as their mother gripped their shoulders suddenly. They whirled about and then started giggling wildly. Mama, you scared us! We thought you were the Dread Witch! <laughs> their mother grinned from ear to ear as she stood up. Rosalina placed a hand on her hip, and in the other hand, she began to conjure her magic. Her hand glowed with bright azure light. I am the Dread Witch! <gasps> You're the Dread Witch? But, but, but you're our mom! Rosalina bent down and hugged both of her children. Oh, I can be both your mom and the Dread Witch. <laughs> you see, my darlings, after that last adventure, I had no desire to return to that fountain all alone. It was hidden away and safe. Throughout my travels with your Uncle Bronca, he told me of his brother, your father. <laughs> he told me so many stories about their childhood, and so I asked to meet him. You asked to meet Daddy? What happened? Now, now. It's late and it's time for bed. Please, Mom! One more story! Please! Yeah, Rosie. Please? Fine. <laughs> The first time I saw your father was when he was dangling one-legged from the right claw of the infamous dragon pirate, Captain Fluffy Flame the Cannon Father. <laughs> <laughs>